applications. Applications change. There's a new world out there. People are running things in a um, cloud native microservices fashion and their architecture to host these applications for whatever use case, whatever application they need to run has changed dramatically. Kubernetes essentially is a glue that connects all of these new trends and concepts in the modern multi-cloud architecture, whether you're running it on-prem, running it at the edge, or running it on one of the public clouds. The concepts are pretty much the same. Kubernetes is that abstraction, is that glue that connects all of these trends and concepts together. Why Kubernetes became the popular choice in cloud native architectures and then became the standard for the cloud architectures of today because of its background and its uh, philosophy that uh, that's where it started and where its philosophy that the developers have stuck to. It's the open source way of thinking, leverage the learnings from the hyperscalers as you would guess it was designed to run a hyperscaler environment and API and automation made that easier for everybody to adopt and made it scale tremendously. It's essentially the, the technology that provides the abstraction across cloud, similar to virtualization, which provides the abstraction for multiple physical servers. Now Kubernetes is the abstraction technology that can uh, connect all the computing infrastructures, whether it's public or private or edge type of clouds. It simply was a better choice to manage many resources, and it was software only, and that made it the clear winner and choice for DevOps, clear choice for large-scale IT operations, because you could really have operational cost savings just by using this technology, and you don't have to do things in the very monolithic and old school way. And that helped treating infrastructure as a code and Kubernetes was the main player in achieving this uh, success, in my opinion, and uh, according to many in the industry, as Dan also mentioned. Object storage also played a, a common role together with Kubernetes because object storage started, especially S3, as a protocol, thanks to Amazon Web Services, AWS S3 started as the cloud native choice for uh, persistent storage. Legacy environments like NAS and SAN, and especially NAS, used uh, file systems and POSIX type of protocols, which were considered to be legacy, chatty, and not really fit for the cloud native environments, the multi-cloud environments of today, because they were just meant for the data center. It, the chattiness, the latency, there are a lot of technical reasons why, and, and many choices in, in doing a lot of things uh, that are not required by the modern applications. Modern applications just required simple puts and gets and reads and writes. And that was not the way of POSIX. POSIX was designed for a different era, for different things. And modern applications required RESTful APIs that are simple to operate. And object storage became popular in, in Kubernetes world, in the modern cloud world because of that reason. Scale was another factor. POSIX file systems and SAN and NAS were designed for within the data centers, whereas S3, as well as object storage, was designed for large scale across multiple data centers or huge amounts of um, capacities of storage. Another, form, another factor is you wanted commodity hardware and the software taking care of the data protection. All the advanced algorithms like erasure coding, bit drop detection, locking the objects, and all the enterprise features people needed could be achieved simply on top of the object storage, on top of the S3 APIs. And this made life so much easier for the cloud-based applications, microservices, to be able to use object storage rather than the legacy block or file-based uh, approach. That, with that said, MinIO started just to fill that gap. MinIO started just to fill that, address that need in the industry because NAS and SAN was not cutting it just because of all those reasons. The across data center usage, um, the cloud native applications being across multi clouds and across the world, if not even just different data centers, but different geographies. And you needed an HTTP based protocol to be able to reach the storage, persistent storage anywhere. 
but at the same time get all the protections. So Minio was started on that premise, and Minio focused on doing object storage and object storage only, and became to fame by its compatibility to Amazon S3. Amazon S3 protocol, as well as the services as people know it, you could get both of them together with Minio and deploy it on prem, deploy it on your laptop, on an edge, on multi cloud. It can go to exabyte scale. And the and simplicity of running MinIO made it so popular in the industry. And today we are talking about MinIO and Kubernetes and OpenShift integration just because of that popularity. Simply put, MinIO is a high performance object storage that is Kubernetes native and it is run, it is built for large scale but simplicity in mind by integrating into Kubernetes distributions by just simply deploying on bare metals or VMs. It doesn't really matter. MinIO is that abstraction layer that provides you persistent storage across all clouds, edge, public, private, or any other platform. And it's been done in a way, it's been built in a way with the performance in mind. And we are the fastest performance uh, performance object storage in the industry today because of some of the technical um, details that we paid attention attention to and which we can go into it in uh, some of the. Rest.